Hey guys, welcome back to Bambi TV. Guys, they won't be reacting to former missionary helped over 600 Christian priests convert to Islam. Hmm. Guys, let's get straight into this. Assalamu alaikum. In this episode, we're bringing a miraculous story of a Christian priest named Musa Bangura who left his wealthy life of the church and became a delegated Muslim. What is really interesting is that he is not an ordinary Christian. Both his father and brother are pastors in the church and his entire family have been dedicated themselves to the service of the church. Zemusa Bangura, formerly called Mark Moses Bangura, is from Sierra Leone and had his family root deeply embedded in Christianity. Due to Moses' bright and intelligent personality from young age, he was sent to a church school and a school for training priests, and he came out in flying colors. However, instead of assigning him to a church immediately after he graduated, the church official sent him to Nigeria to attend an evangelist church. He became an experienced evangelist priest that had the ability to persuade people. Even the church officials were amazed by how well Moses can conceive people about Christianity and how he can compel anyone to change their religion. That was an amazing talent because not everybody can do that. So Moses succeeded and he returned to Sierra Leone. He has become a fully trained priest, so he's ready to take up the missionary activities. He began to organize activities all over the country. He started from the Muslim community inviting them to Christianity. So what exactly drove him to become a Muslim when he has been preaching against Islam all his life? This is it. On a fateful night, he slept like a normal person would and had a dream. Here's the climax. Wait for it. Young man, why are you taking people away from the light and calling them into darkness? Why do you persist in the dark? Why don't you come into the light? This is a warning. In his dream, he heard a man in a flowing garment say those to him. He was baffled and didn't tell anyone when he woke up the next day. After that, I had a dream. A young man telling me, Brother, this is a message that you are taking people from the light to the darkness. Stop doing this. Then now, come into the light. Then you can go to the darkness and taking the people from the darkness, bringing them to the light. Stop mislead, mislead the people. This is a warning for you. He thought it was Satan playing tricks with him and wanted to take his Bible to read. Then he realized it was like the young man was still around him. Moses spoke to a priest in the church about the dream since he kept wondering what it could be. The priest told him it was a demon trying to sabotage his mind because he's a high priest. But guys, let's understand that when the Almighty is calling you into the light, he won't leave you to go astray. Moses wasn't pleased with the answer he got from the priest since he already thought about that himself, but he knew the situation was about something else. The thought of the dream didn't leave him for a second, and he felt like it was tormenting him. Moses then visited the Imam at a mosque and explained the situation. The Imam said, My brother, you're a very lucky person. Look, Allah invites you to your religion without any intermediary. What are you waiting for? Moses was satisfied with what he heard and said he'll like to revert at that moment. The Imam, however, said he can't take that decision and took him to the director. The director saw him, and since Moses was quite popular, the director was surprised that the high priest wanted to revert. Moses explained to him too, and he was told to come back on a Friday. As he was going, he thought about the Christian church and how they've financed his life. He thought about the properties that were bestowed to him by Christians and were like, he will revert. He was like, why will I leave Christianity that had everything and come to Islam that has nothing? And this was one of his struggles on the path of becoming a Muslim. We all should know that the Almighty loves us and when he makes decisions, 
it's for our own good. Moses had the dream again, and he knew he had no choice but to revert. He went back on a Friday, took the Shahada, had a bath, and became Muslim. Alhamdulillah. During the time for Jummah and the Muslim congregation saw him, they were afraid at first, thinking he bought another crusade to the masjid. Imagine their surprise when they got to know that he was there to revert. Hence, this is the beginning of Moses' journey towards being a Muslim. He changed his name to Musa Bangua to ascertain his faith. It's one thing to have accepted the call of entering into the fold of Islam, and it's another to live with it. Musa was worried about how Christian missionary and his family will take the matter, but he believed Allah Almighty will get him through. Normally, the Christians usually have meetings every Friday. After taking the Shahada on that blessed Friday, Musa went to the church meeting. When the pastors and priests saw him, they were surprised. They asked about the reason he cut his hair and is wearing a garment that's worn by the Muslims. Musa replied by saying, he is now a Muslim. The pastors were speechless and thought Musa was going mad when he explained his dreams and decisions. They later commanded one of them, a pastor, to stay with Musa and see if he's truly a Muslim and isn't going mad. The pastor followed him home while counseling and telling him to go back to Christianity. The pastor told Christian missionaries what happened and the church made a decision. They took all of Musa's properties without allowing him to pack a single thing. He was left with nothing and had to hide with a Muslim friend. He wasn't allowed any contact with his relatives, although he got to see his sister who told him not to go home. Musa was able to contact his wife and explained his predicament. Moreover, his wife's family are Christians, so all his pleading fell on deaf ears. They got divorced and he was left with no one. Likewise, he can't stay in hiding forever, which was the reason the Muslim community wrote a letter to the church council telling him they'd be held responsible if something bad happened to Musa. Furthermore, the period of hiding helped Musa improve rapidly in his Islamic education and he proceeded to start calling people towards Islam. He began his da'wah activities back as a Muslim and helped many people become Muslims. Brother Musa Bangura now travels from village to village, from town to town, spreading the message of Islam. Everywhere he goes, he challenges the missionary priests and the Christian clergy that he can prove Islam is the truth. If I win, you will be Muslim. If you win, I will become a Christian. These debates have helped over 650 priests and many of their congregations towards Islam. Yes, well, uh, now it's more than 600 pastors. Now it's more than. And alhamdulillah, even some of my pastors, that the other pastors converts, I sent some to Liberia to work now because Liberia is a Christian-dominated country. And I sent some to the different cities in Sierra Leone, those who are former pastors. I trained them just like what I'm doing. Now we are all over. I can boast of having more than 1,000 pastors now into Islam, which are doing the same work. Though we are struggling, we are suffering, but we are doing this because we are running the hereafter, not this world. His fame spread quickly, so much so that they no longer dare to confront him. Alhamdulillah. May Allah increase his reward and elevate his rank in both worlds. Assalamu alaikum. Guys, I feel it's a beautiful thing for you to know that you found peace in this. Yes, and you try telling people about that peace you have found. But, you know, I've been thinking about something lately and it got to me. Me knowing about, because I told you I'm reading the Bible, me knowing the Bible little, 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 but I'm reading the Bible little by little, and me understanding what I'm reading. Like, I don't see any flaw in it, if I'm being honest. Guys, if you read the book, some things have actually changed in the story of Jesus after the New Testament, but when you read the red letters of what Jesus actually said, 
It's actually beautiful. But I won't say like guys, there's something I've actually been noticing. Like Muslims have this this mindset that the Bible is false. And they have this mindset that Christians worship God. That we are not worshipping the real God. We are worshipping idols and stuff like that. So let's let's bring it. Let's bring it back to uh, let me talk as a Christian now. Okay. Some Christians feel the Quran is false. Yes. And they think that Muslims actually worship the moon. Guys, you see, these are two things that people with lack of knowledge actually believe in because they don't really know the truth. And I feel people should stop advocating the rights that this book is false and this book is right. Because if you read the Bible, like, I dare you open the Bible and read. I won't, I can't say the Bible is false because it isn't. Like, if you read it, there's there's a reason for everything that is written. You know, sometimes when I asked a Muslim friend of mine about something in the Quran, he was like, I really can't give you my own understanding. Like, he needs to see a you need to see a more experienced person. Sorry. Let me put this phone on to not disturb. He said you need to meet a more experienced person, like someone that have dedicated his life to understanding the Quran to actually explain it for you. I feel that is the same as the Bible, but I feel the Bible is translated in some literal word that you can easily understand when you read by yourself. So, like, if you think of it, because I'm listening to both of them with open mind, and I can see that in some way, I'm seeing the Quran as something that's supposed to come after the Bible. But in some way, I'm thinking that it's, it's, it's somehow, guys, like, it's somehow because based on what I've been reading about Jesus. Jesus said a lot of things, guys. Jesus said a lot of things. I wish you can read the red letters that was actually written and listen to what Jesus said himself. Guys, just check it out and we'll come to the conversation and discuss. Guys, just like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.